Hey everybody, this is Dan once again with another Git tutorial video. Today I'm going to talk about Git Cherry Pick. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to be using this Hello World repo that I've used in many, many videos. There's not a whole lot going on in it. Um, and I'm actually going to be using two terminals today. So if you notice in the top here, I am Dan at localhost. And I'm going to be Bob on uh, another machine called Willow over here. So... Um, I'll be switching back and forth, so I got the colors a little different, so hopefully it's easier to follow. But um, I'm going to show you an example of using Git Cherry Pick. One example of when to use it, and one example when not to use it. And before I get into that, if we just look briefly at the man page, you might be wondering, well, what is Git Cherry Pick? It's almost exactly what it sounds like. It's basically applying the changes introduced by existing commits onto a branch that you have um, and so this is often used for things like hot fixes if you you know if you pull some stuff and uh, and your current state of your repo is broken and somebody else says oh yeah I found that I have the fix for it it's in this commit get cherry pick it so you can continue um, so we're actually going to show that as a first example um, so let's go ahead and see what branch we're on here we're on the master branch and we are going to fetch and merge with the latest state of uh, origin master so we'll go ahead and we'll do a git fetch here and it's actually got a SSH to another machine so it's waiting to authenticate here and I believe I'm up to date but I just wanted to do this for completeness Okay, so yeah, we're definitely up to date. So let's go ahead and merge with Origin Master. And it was fast forward merge, which is awesome. So now if we do make in our project, we find that we have an error. And so this is the setup. This is the, we're pretending this is an example. And this happens a lot um, in actual software de development projects where accidentally somebody pushed something that is broken. So as a developer, we can now try to track it down and fix it ourselves. But let's pretend that we got um, an email or a call from Bob or we talked to him. And basically, Bob, who is a developer on this project too, already found this error and fixed it in a commit. And so what we want to do is cherry pick that fix onto our branch. And so what we have to do then is... Uh, let's look at our Git remotes. We should have a Bob remote, and we do. And so let's make sure we have all the refs for Bob by doing a git fetch on that remote. And so, you know, we have to do this to... If we hadn't fetched recently, we need to do this to make sure we, we have Bob's latest state so that we can cherry pick the commit that he created. Okay, and you can see that it brought in a couple branches and Bob told us that he fixed this on the master branch right so we want to look at the git log of this guy see if we can find this commit he's talking about okay and it happens to be at the top check it out so in order to get cherry pick all you really need is the SHA-1 for the commit that you want to cherry pick and so that's why I've highlighted it and copied it here uh, so it's 6DC. So we're still Dan in our repo and we are on the master branch. So to get cherry pick, all we have to do is get cherry pick and then the SHA-1 that we want. And what happened when we did this was git took the content from this commit, which you can, you can sort of visualize it as the diff associated with this commit, the new content that came in, and it merged it into the current state of our current branch, which is master. So if we look at our git log now, we're going to see hotfix for duplicate parameter, right? That makes sense. And the author of this was Bob. Now, one thing that's interesting to note here, that if you're new to git, you might not realize or understand that, remember, we git cherry-picked the six... Uh, 
what was that? It was a 60C commit, right? Well, in our branch now, check it out. We have the same content, but with a different SHA-1. So the SHA-1 is different because git cherry pick creates a new commit with the same content. And it actually says that in the man page if you look at it. So as you can imagine, this can cause strange merge conflicts if the content is cherry picked and then modified in two separate lines of development. So that's just something to be aware of. And I might talk about the implications of merging and conflicts of this later on. But for right now, don't, don't really worry about it. So we have cherry picked the content, right? And so if I do a make now, I will find that my project is working again. And if I do a run, we should always do that too, right? So let's run hello, and it's also running. So cherry picks are most useful for this concept of a hot fix where you have a problem that is um, impeding your work in one way or another and somebody else has already fixed it. Um, so I want to show an example of using cherry picks incorrectly because some people may, you know, it's kind of a cool concept and people are like, well, you know, if you're developing with 10 people and someone creates some content and you want that content, but you don't want to merge with them for one reason or another that you might be tempted to cherry pick it. And so I'm going to go through an example here where we're going to switch over to the Bob terminal and he has his hello world repo and as you can see he's on a branch called sphere attempt and if we look at the git log he has attempted working on a sphere class and he's one commit deep from his uh, hotfix on the master branch so in this pretend scenario Bob hears from Dan that Dan has already created some sphere content and that exists in Dan's sphere class. So since that's already set up as a remote for Bob, we'll see that git branch dash A shows our current uh, branch and then also Dan's sphere branch. And so if we look at Dan's sphere branch, look at the git log, we'll see uh, he's made one commit here. And now, remember, and I almost forgot here, let's go ahead and do a git fetch. Make sure we're up to date with Dan's uh, sphere branch. So we're going to go ahead and do a git fetch on Dan, which, as you know, will download the latest refs from Dan so that we can see them, although it does not affect your working tree. Okay, so it did actually bring in some new content on Dan slash master and Dan slash sphere. So if we do a git log on Dan slash sphere now, we'll see. Uh, oh, it looks like there's two commits here, right? So, you know, just by observation, we can see, well, there's two commits here. Um, you might ask yourself, hey, if I want to, if I'm Bob and I feel like cherry picking this sphere content, which I'm going to explain to you why is a bad idea. You might ask yourself, well, how do I cherry pick multiple commits? What do I do? I just take the latest one. Do I take the first one? Do I have to do both? And the answer is you really need to if you have to do this, you want to cherry pick from the oldest to the newest as long as they're linear commits. So in this example, if we wanted to do that get branch, we're on our sphere attempt. So the plan here would be to get cherry pick the old commit and then the new commit. So let's give it a shot and let's see where it goes with it. Get cherry pick to E1. And we get this error, which I wanted to show you. Could not apply to E1, added sphere class, not fully implemented, which is the name of the commit or the commit message. It says we have basically uh, merge conflicts, so we have to resolve them. So if we do get status now, you'll notice that we have unmerged paths. So I wanted to point this out because you may think if you're new to Git that you can only get a merge conflict on a merge action, but Git cherry pick is a merge action. So that's just something to note. And basically what happened here is Bob had done some development and he made a a file called sphere cpp and sphere hh and he started implementing it so if we do a git merge tool we'll see all those differences but 
and so I guess what I want to show you here is that you have to resolve these merge conflicts and then you'd have to cherry pick the second commit uh, that we were talking about. So it kind of seems like a lot of work. And so if, if you're experienced with Git, you're saying, why are you doing this? And you're right. Th this is not the correct way to go about getting Dan's sphere changes. I mean, after all, if you talk to him and he tells you it's fully implemented, why would you uh, want to cherry pick that content when yours is in progress? You know it's going to create a merge conflict, right? So let's go ahead and abort this by doing a reset hard. And so now we are back at the sphere temp branch. And so this is just an example of how not to do a cherry pick. And so what we should do instead is go back to the common base, which we know is master because we saw it in the git log. Oops. Create a new branch for our content. We'll just call it sphere. And then git merge with oops, dan slash sphere. Right? And so we get the merge commit, but no conflict because we were at a branch state that didn't have our work in progress when we did the merge. And we do a git log now, and we see that we have the merge, uh, the merge commit here, the hot fix that was on the branch, and then uh, the sphere content commit um, here and here. And so the reason they don't show up in order is because of the way git log sort of collapses merged history into a linear timeline. So I'm not going to go into that into this video, but I just wanted to show you that. So I was doing some reading and git cherry pick actually will let you um, use a range of commits. And so in the case where you need to cherry pick multiple commits, you'll probably want to investigate that. I might do a video on that. Um, but I wanted to keep this one short just as an introduction to what Git Cherry Pick is and what it can do for you. So with that, I think I'm just going to wrap it up. And so just to summarize, to use Git Cherry Pick, you basically want to do a Git log on the hotfix reference, which is uh, usually a branch that a coworker told you, or they may email you the exact SHA-1 of the commit that you need uh, to find the commit. And then you want to do git cherry pick that SHA-1 uh, on your current branch. It will apply applied to current branch. Okay. So, and that's pretty much it. So, uh, happy cherry picking. My name's Dan. I'll see you guys next time.